Hey guys, what's up? My name is Pete Breaker, and in today's video, I'd like to show you what is, in my opinion, the best program to share your mouse and keyboard across multiple computers. Now, before I found this solution, I would have my main mouse and keyboard obviously connected to my main PC, where I would play my games on, and then I would have a secondary keyboard slash mouse combination thingy connected to my stream PC that I would then use to access the stream PC. Obviously, that's super inconvenient, and this is exactly where a program called KVM switches or keyboard video mouse switches come into play. Now, these software allow you to use your mouse and keyboard across multiple computers that are in the same network. Now, while there are many, many different solutions that allow you to do just that, even across multiple operating systems, the tool that I'd like to introduce in today's video, which is called Input Director, only works for Windows. But on the flip side, it's totally free to use. So what you can do with this program is not only can you share your mouse across multiple computers, you can also copy paste the clipboard from one computer to another. You can set up your monitors just the way you like to. So you can have your secondary monitor on top, to the right, to the left or underneath your main monitor. You can set up as many slave devices as you want to. And finally, you can even copy paste entire files from one computer to another. So in today's video, I want to show you how to install and set up Input Director on two computers and how to get a second computer to boot into Windows without having a mouse or keyboard attached. So on both of your computers, go to InputDirector.com and download the version 1.4 of the Input Director. Once downloaded and extracted, run the Input Director executable. Now on your main PC, you want to go to Master Configuration Click on add and add the host name of your slave, so of your stream PC. Now, if you don't know what the host name of your stream PC is, you can simply open up input director on the stream PC and there you can see the host name of your system. Now, quick little note, if you want to change your host name, you can go to Windows, Settings, type about, click on about your PC and click on rename this PC. And that's where OBS Studio decided to take a dump on me and prematurely stop the recording. Anyways, in your master configuration on your main PC, you want to click on Add Slave System and enter the host name that you've just decided for your stream PC. In my case, this is going to be Stream uh, Speed Stream. If you want to, you can now set up a data encryption level but because I'm only using this in my local LAN, I don't really bother with encryption. Now, if you do have multiple monitors connected to your slave system, then you can set up how many monitors you have attached to your slave system here. And if you want to set a hotkey to immediately um, switch control over to your slave PC, then you can set up a hotkey right there. I'm not going to do any of these two and click OK. Now on this screen, you can now actually change the physical position of your slave system. So if I'd have it on the left hand side, I can just move it to the left. Or if I have it on top, I can move it up there. But in my example, I actually have my second PC on my right hand side. Next, you want to go to Master Preferences, scroll down a little bit and make sure that don't allow transitions near a monitor's corner is checked. Now, what this does is it prevents the mouse from skipping to the second monitor if you're close to a corner. And this is actually super handy. So say, for example, we have a page open. Let's say it's full size windowed and we want to close it. Now, naturally, what you want to do is you just quickly go to the top right hand corner. But if you don't check this option, you will jump across to the second monitor, which is actually quite annoying. So in this case, you really want to select this option. Don't allow transition near a monitor's corner. Then you want to go to Global Preferences and tick Run Input Director on Startup, as well as on Start, Input Director is enabled as Master. Then enable Share Clipboard and make sure to disable the Cursor Water Ripple effect. Now, this effect, in my opinion, introduces a tiny bit of input lag uh, whenever you are jumping across to the second monitor. Maybe it's just because the animation doesn't run at like 60 FPS. But in my opinion, this effect is just plain annoying, so I like to disable it. Next, it's time to set up the input director on our stream PC. Here we want to go to Slave Configuration 
and I like to have allow any computer to take control enabled. Now, if you don't like this, you can also specifically uh, note which kind of computer actually is allowed to take over control. So if you have a network of more than uh, just one person in your house, um, then you might want to select specifically which kind of host name is allowed to take over control of your PC. Also, if you wanted to use encryption, you'd have to set it up right here. Then, of course, you also want to set up in the global preferences to run input director on startup as well as on start run input director as slave. Once again, make sure that the share clipboard is enabled and that the cursor water ripple effect is turned off. Now, with this basic setup, what you can do is obviously use your mouse and keyboard across the two computers, as well as copy paste stuff from one PC to another. However, if you want to also copy paste files, you'll also have to set up some sort of window share in order to actually get this copy and pasting functionality to work. If you want to set up a Windows share, um, it's actually super simple. So right click on the folder you want to share, click on properties, click on sharing. Now click on share. And if you do this the first time, you'll only have your own name. Click on everyone, click on add and make sure to get read and write permissions. Click on share and voila, you will now share your folder with another computer. Now to use this on our second PC, we want to go into our Explorer, right click on network, click on map network device and copy paste the network path of our shared folder from the main PC. Click on connect using different credentials, click on finish enter the password from your main PC. And once you've set this up, you should now be able to copy paste files from your main PC onto the stream PC. Now, interestingly, this also works for any folder really. So you can go, for example, this folder here and copy paste files also from there. So I'm not quite sure why this is done in that way, but you just somehow need to have one folder shared from the main PC on your stream PC to copy paste files from the main PC to the stream PC and vice versa. If you want to copy paste files from the stream PC to the main PC, you're going to have to set up at least one shared folder on your main PC from the stream PC. So with having set that up, we can now use our mouse and keyboard across our two computers and we can also share our clipboard, but we still have to set up a few Windows options on our slave PC to make this actually a much more smooth experience. And what I'm talking about is having to get rid of the login screen of Windows, because if you do have this input director set up, obviously it's not gonna be able to operate your stream PC before it's actually logged in. And that kind of defeats the purpose of not having a mouse and keyboard being connected to the stream PC using this method. So now I'm gonna show you how to get rid of your password. Little disclaimer, of course, this is not very safe and you should definitely not do this if you're not in a private space where nobody else has access to your computer. So in order to get rid of the login password, click on the start menu and type netplwiz. And once you've typed it in, you should see a hidden uh, kind of tool, which is called netplwiz. Untick the users must enter a username and password to use this computer. Click on apply and confirm your password. Now, the next time you're going to log in into your computer, you will not be prompted by a password, but immediately load into Windows. Now, in some cases, you'll need to disable the boot error if no keyboard or mouse is detected upon boot, because otherwise your PC is never going to boot into Windows. Obviously, which option you'll have to disable depends very much on the motherboard that you're using, but once you've found the correct option, you should be able to boot directly into Windows. Now, the only gripe that I have with this method is that sometimes the mouse on your stream PC is not going to show up, even though it's actually connected nicely um, using input director, Windows thinks you're in tablet mode and therefore doesn't draw a mouse, which is really annoying, but there's a way to fix it. So click on Windows, type control panel, and now you'll use the tab um, key on your um, keyboard to actually navigate through these options here. Click on ease of access, click on change how your mouse works, and make sure that turn off, 
turn on mouse key is actually enabled. Ha! Hit apply. And now your mouse should be visible regardless if you don't have a mouse or keyboard connected to a computer once it actually boots. All right, but that about covers it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I will see you guys in the next video. Bonus tip. How to synchronize multiple sources like a boss. All right. <laughs>